Hello, Comms 363 students. I'm going to go through some APA citation tips and document for formatting tips for Comms 363 assignments that will save you some unnecessary penalties. And if you've already submitted by the time you get this, you can also um, submit an updated version if you feel like you've, um, you've got some fixes to do. If you do uh, it, submit more than one file, by default we will look at the most recent one that you've posted in your submission area. As long as you don't submit it late, you won't get uh, late penalties. Of course, there's a 24-hour grace period as well. I'm going to look through two samples and walk through um, what I've noticed from each one and show you some things. First of all, the first time you mention your website that you're analyzing in your report, it should be treated like this as a, a website citation in passing. Here you can see that the Trout Unlimited Canada is being given an acronym, the TUC, and that's how you introduce an acronym. And at the same time, they're being um, cited according to their domain name in parentheses. If this were in their sentence grammar, the title of the website, then it would be uh, italicized. But right here is the, uh, the name of their organization, so that's fine. Moving forward to the next issue. Um, now, just realize I've put some stuff in the margin here, and I'm not going to be covering all of these things. These are a lot of them are little X errors. They're things to look for. If you want to slow down and pause the video, you can do that. But just this video, to keep it short enough, I'm going to only focus on APA referencing and uh, a few formatting things. The next APA issue here is that they have um, not put their precise locator uh, within the sentence that includes the quotation. So the latest you can put it is at the end of the sentence that contains the quotation. Um, this is proper to put Grandy in your sentence and then write away the year because in APA the year is always glued to the author and you can see that it's not needed to say Grandy 2013 again right before the page number. It's fine to have the page number by itself in this case. Um, so the problem is it's misplaced, and I believe I also checked the source to find out whether this idea came from the source. And if it doesn't come from the source, but from the student who's writing this, then this is unethical because it makes it seem like this idea comes from Grandy. So be very careful in terms of finding out that, uh, that you haven't glued together quotation plus paraphrase and then ending it like this with a page number or with a author year citation because you really need to ethically distinguish their ideas from your ideas. The next issue, this is proper formatting. If you have a quotation that is 40 words or longer, it needs to be spaced like this. And what you do is you use your control M, okay, that moves it that way, or control shift M moves it back. Okay. Um, the problem here is that it's a direct quote and there is no page number or paragraph number. And let's see here, the next thing. We want you to cite the usability.gov website pages um, with proper author, which is, this is correct, as the Department of Health and Human Services. You can introduce an acronym for them, and it would be USDHHS. Um, but this right now, uh, they've chosen to use the PDF version that they allow you to download from their website, but we want you to cite it according to each page on their website, okay? because it is a website and their information is found on their pages. So please cite web pages rather than the PDF. This is well formatted as a figure because it is uh, zoomed in, it's legible, and it's uh, on the right hand side if it's a certain width of the text with the text wrapped around to the left. And the only thing wrong, um, they have italicized figure one, but they put a colon instead of period. So just one little tiny thing to change there. It's also good that they put figure one in text 
you should have it either before or adjacent to your figure or table, and this is close enough, and it's good. The spacing of headings, this should be snugged up to the paragraph that follows. This one here, uh, the figure has no um, distinction of its background with the page color, so this needs a border. And this one they forgot to cite in text as figure two. This one here is a um, pretty good citation of Lynch and Horton. The only problem is that the ampersand only goes uh, into your prose when it's inside of parentheses. So if you said Lynch and Horton 2009 within the parentheses, you can use the ampersand. But because they're within your sentence grammar, we want the word and. Now when you give section numbers followed by paragraph numbers, you can abbreviate the section heading if it really is a long section heading and put the abbreviation in quotation marks. And it should be in title case, so the P should be in capital. Section is in lowercase, that's proper. But here I went to the source and I found out that their whole heading was just indenting paragraphs. So they should just remove these um, quotation marks. Let's see what else. Um, okay, I'm looking at their reference list. The common errors here, um, putting the date and the year in the wrong order. This would be the year first, then the month, and the month should be in full name, not abbreviation. So November instead of NOV period. Then a date if one is provided on the page. Um, here, because it's a PDF file, APA wants you to treat it the same way as a book title or a, a separate report, a standalone item. So the title would then have to be in title case and italics. We often see unnecessary colons, just remove those after your retrieval statement. Make sure you include all of the initials of your authors. Um, don't confuse website with web page. This is an actual page as you can see from the URL. This is properly capitalized because a, pe a web page should be in sentence case and the only thing that remains in capital letters or capitalized would be proper nouns like Alberta or the first word of a title or the first word after a colon. That would be the first word after in the, in the subtitle. Um, this one's just missing J, P, J. Okay. And they've included this when they shouldn't include it. All we need is the name of the web page called or the title of the web page, legibility. And so this is what we just need in there. Legibility with web page in square brackets followed by a period. And uh, we don't need the Web Style Guide 3rd Edition here because all we have it is retrieved from and it's right here. That tells us enough. I'm glad they included a genre there in their reference. They kept the the quotation marks from the title, the original title had quotation marks in it, so that's fine. Now our textbook and handbook, just copy and paste them from our course outline. I give you the reference in correct format. And uh, if it strips the italics, then put the italics back, because we need the title in italics. Here they've done the right thing with ABC. So I'm just going to talk about how that works. You will have to cite multiple pages of your website, whether it's Asthma or the uh, SALTS website. And this is how you do it. Whenever in APA you have an authoring year that's the same for several sources, then it gets treated like this. We sort them by the first word uh, of their title field. And once we sort them, then we apply the A, B, and C. The hyphen only comes in if you've used n.d. If it's a year like 2016, it's just 20168 without the hyphen. Um, so this is how it's done. And of course, it's not a website. That would be like multiple pages, okay, web page. Um, so of course, they've, they've put the PDF in here when really we want a particular page from that website and take away all the extraneous things that hang on to the ends of URLs that uh, just show what heading you clicked on. 
And sometimes you don't include some things that we, we go to the page and we find that, no, it's actually April 16th. This is, there's a real specific date, so you need to use that. Um, just quickly, I'm going to go to another file and cover some things that that one didn't. One of the things was um, line spacing. I'm going to put it back to the way it, it was. Let's see here. Okay, yeah. So the way it was was this single spacing. And um, you can tell by going right click, going into the paragraph, going into this tab, and you can see it's under single. And we, uh, in our handbook, we say that that's just too tight for readability. We want either 1.5 or we want as, or as small as 1.15. So you could manually change multiple to 1.15 and press OK. Um, in terms of formatting, um, APA, let's see the first one that's significant. Double quotation marks are default, default, so we only use single quotation marks when it's a quotation within a quotation. There's no such thing as n.p. in APA. Whenever it doesn't have pagination on the pages, then we use paragraph numbers. Um, here they have called something section 5, when really the source had the number 5 and then it had words after it. What we really need is if they have quoted or if a quotation requires to have uh, a paragraph number. Okay. So you can either do paragraph counting from the top of the document or you can have um, a section heading followed by a paragraph number. The problem here was I went to the source and uh, this person deserves a capital R because it didn't represent the reasoning of the source. It was misleading about what they were actually talking about. And also they had an unethical paraphrase because this phrase here was found in the original with the only change of the word they, and it used to be we. And what they really need to be ethical is use quotation marks around their borrowed phrase, then give the precise locator. And you can see that you can change the grammar and replace her original word we with the word they, but put it in square brackets if you make any changes within quotations. Um, let's see here. Ducks Unlimited Canada needed to have an in-text um, citation with the domain name. We covered that. Some of these errors repeat. Here, um, the title of the page that you're citing from from your website does not go in the reference. It goes in your sentence. So here in the sentence, news and events calendar would be in quotation marks in title case. And then in here, you would have Trout Unlimited Canada or TUC. That's what would be required here. And of course, you'd need to use the A and B format if there's more than one page being cited from their website. Here they've also forgotten to give a uh, passing reference for their website or on their Facebook page. So you'd need the specific URL that leads them to the Trout Unlimited Canada Facebook page. So the Facebook page by itself um, has a specific slash, etc, etc. So it needs to be more specific than Facebook.com. It has to be, it takes us right to their Facebook page. Same thing with Instagram page, that needs um, an in-text citation. And again, these in-text citations would not appear in the reference list because they are entire um, websites or entire works. Okay, and then finally, um, there's some things about their headings, which I won't cover. Um, their headings are not spaced out properly. They've added extra spaces like that. See their paragraph markers. Um, They've also not distinguished their headings enough from the rest of their text. It's in the same font, it's in the same size, and they should really be using the style locators in Microsoft Word. They should be clicking here if it's heading one, clicking here if it's heading two. And if you don't like the way that they style your heading two, that's okay, you can apply that style. For example, if I want that to be heading two, and then maybe I want to color it blue, 
you can do that and then right click this and update the heading to to match what you have. You see it changed it to blue up here. So you can customize it a bit if you don't like it but it needs to be distinct enough from your body text and using this selector will help you with your table of contents in your final report because tables of contents uh, we want you to use the Microsoft Word built-in one and they're only populated if you use the selector of the styles of the built-in headings. Um, so what did we have here? Um, I think some of the same errors are coming up as the previous document, so I'll skip over some of those. Um, don't forget your genre if it's a, a web document. The retrieval date we often omit only if it's a wiki or a feed or something continually changing. And uh, you have the name of their magazine, so you don't even need retrieved from Smashing Magazine. Okay, so just retrieved from and then the URL. You don't need multiple references that look exactly the same. You could cite that 10 times in text and once in your references is fine. Here's what you do to fix this type of reference is uh, if you really are referring to their home page and it doesn't have the title on it, home page, um, you put it in uh, square brackets in the title position and you make sure that just the author name is here. And here actually they, they referred to the whole website in their text. So this shouldn't even be here unless they're talking about something on the actual home page compared to any other page of their website. So this doesn't even need to be here in the reference list. But if you were talking about a home page item, you could do it this way. Okay. Here um, they should have used the ABC style as in the previous document. So you've learned a lot about what we see commonly as errors and I really wish you well and uh, I'm glad that if you've watched this video you have probably saved yourself, mm, I don't know, maybe depending on how many errors you made, you could have saved yourself many little, little R periods, O periods and capital R periods in your comments. So it's well worth your time and I'll talk to you later. Bye.